In today's video, I'm going to show you how to draw an animal cell. So the first step to doing this is to draw the cell membrane. So just draw a roughly circular or oval sort of shape. Uh, you don't really have to worry about being extremely perfect. Um, the idea is to draw a boundary which encloses some sort of space. Just make sure that there are no sharp edges. Just make it smooth and rounded. Because the cell membrane is a very flexible uh, structure. So we just label this as the cell membrane. And whatever is inside the cell, that is called as the cytosol. So this contains all the cell uh, organelles, all the various parts of the cell. And we'll start by, uh, we'll start drawing all the various organelles uh, I'll just write that word organelle organelle is nothing but a tiny organ so the various uh, structures of the cell that help it perform various functions so the first thing we are going to look at is the nucleus now the nucleus is a double membrane organelle so it has two layers of membranes so now we draw that by drawing two circles an outer circle and an inner circle so these two circles have gaps within them so draw it just like this uh, with gaps and now we just rub out some portions like this giving gaps so uh, the nucleus has uh, what are called as the nuclear pores so this allows certain substances to come in and go out and that is what we are representing now now what we will do is we will connect these two hanging lines like this with a curved line so the arcs that were drawn are now connected with a line this leaves a small empty gap that is called as the nuclear port <coughs> now within the nucleus we see two structures the nucleolus which is just a shaded circle and the chromatin material which is a squiggle just a scribbled line now let us label all these parts this is the nucleus this is the nucleolus and the squiggle is the chromatin material or the DNA or the genetic material of the cell okay so let's move on to another organelle now we'll be drawing the mitochondrion so the mitochondrion is drawn by first putting in place an oval shape within this oval we will draw these really um, curved lines like this sort of looks like a snake now but uh, we will be connecting these to form to enclose some space within so this is how we draw a mitochondrion let's draw that again an oval shape first and the really curvy lines within and when you're drawing, uh, the mitochondrion is also a double membrane structure. So the outer membrane is an oval shape while the inner membrane is this twisty sort of line. Uh, also, Again, make sure that these two lines have some gap with, between them. Don't just uh, stick them together. So this is the mitochondrion. Let's just label it. Mitochondrion. Now the mitochondrion is singular is a singular form while the mitochondria would be plural okay now next we will draw the endoplasmic reticulum so the endoplasmic reticulum is found in continuation with the uh, membrane of the nucleus so we'll, we have just rubbed out some portion there so that we can draw the endoplasmic reticulum from starting from one end of the uh, nuclear membrane so just draw these uh, set of membranes that are that look like this 
again like just like how you drew inside the mitochondrion these really nice and curvy lines each of these ends look like a finger so just draw these finger sort of shapes and uh, finally connect the end to this side of the nuclear membrane so this endoplasmic reticulum is of two types now what we see here is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum because it doesn't have anything attached to it so i will write endoplasmic reticulum as er and um, the other type of the endoplasmic reticulum is the rough type so uh, the rough type is so called because it has ribosomes attached on the outer side of its membrane like this so the blue dots represent the ribosomes and they are found attached on the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum making the appearance rough so that is why uh, this type of endoplasmic reticulum is called the rough type rough er and the blue dots they are the ribosomes these ribosomes are found on the endoplasmic reticulum on the membrane of the nucleus outer membrane not inside the nucleus outside the nucleus like this and also dispersed through the cell we'll put that in the last so that we don't accidentally enclose the ribosomes within any organelle so the next organelle we are going to see is the golgi body so this is also a system of membranes similar to the smooth endoplasmic reticulum the functions differ so how we draw this is start with a a uh, circle but half completed then now draw a line a horizontal line like this and again draw a circle and then connect these two gaps so you have something a uh, sort of a dumbbell sort of shape with two bulged edges and a tube in the middle now draw this in increasing sizes so the smaller one towards the nucleus and the larger ones towards the cell membrane and you really don't have to be give these sharp edges here just make it smooth like this a uh, really soft curves and the biggest one towards the cell membrane so we just represent this with a set of uh, three sets so that should be enough and then vesicles are found in association with the golgi body so the function of the golgi is to act as a post office it packages substances uh, and sends it to various parts of the cell and the, these vesicles function as the postman they take they enclose the substances that need to be transported and take them to various parts so this is where this gap comes in now when a substance needs to be transported outside the cell the vesicle containing that substance will come and fuse with the cell membrane uh, now understand that at all times the cell membrane is a complete structure there are no such gaps so only when a vesicle is coming in fusing it will uh, there is a complex mechanism behind that which we will learn some day but for today's purposes just understand that the vesicle comes in fuses with the cell membrane but there is no such open gap before the vesicle fuses with the cell membrane and whatever substances are inside are just sent out okay so that um, this vesicle is called as the pinocytic vesicle Oh, I spelt this wrong. Vesicle, right? <clears throat> and this is the Golgi body or the Golgi apparatus. Okay. Now another organelle is the centrioles. So these uh, are drawn by rectangles, two rectangles. perpendicular to each other at right angles to each other centriole the function of these is to produce spindle fibers during cell division so that is generally found somewhere near the nucleus and another organelle is the lysosome 
so the lysosome is a membrane single membrane enclosed structure which contains a lot of digestive enzymes this is basically like a scrap yard so whenever things that are not needed by the cell they are sent to the lysosome and the lysosome breaks these down into the uh, monomers monomeric units and sends it to the cell so that it can be reused <coughs> Okay, so let's just now put some ribosomes in the cytosol. So we have the, we have put all the organelles in place now. Uh, let us go down and look at a completed structure. So this is how a completely uh, properly labeled cell looks like. As you can see, my cell, this animal cell doesn't look like a circle. It just looks like some weird blob sort of shape. So just remember that don't uh, not to give any sharp edges to the cell. In fact, any of the organelles. Don't give any sharp edges to any of the organelles except probably the centrioles. We just represent them using the uh, rectangles. So this is how a finished cell look li looks like. And now